Welcome back to the Dirty Pal Walsh channel. With me, your host, Dirty Pal Walsh, with my freshly dyed black hair. <laughs> I got some black hair dye. And I'm growing my hair out a bit. I'm not afraid of going gray, I just like dyeing my hair. So, so you gotta have some fun, right? I'm almost 50, so, <laughs> you know, my time is running short for doing crazy shit like that, I figure. Um... <clears throat> I want to give a big shout out to uh, Oak Tree Dipper for all your nice comments uh, on my videos as of late. Thank you very much for watching and commenting. <clears throat> and also to Bubba JR123, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for all your views and comments. I really appreciate it. It's nice to feel uh, some support. Uh, I have over 2,000 videos on this channel, I believe. And most of them have 10 views or less, I think. And as of late, uh, I've been getting a lot more views. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. I always say I never do this channel for anything other than to keep me entertained while I'm sitting here home all day. So, uh, but, you know, I, you know, I do this channel the same way uh, if I had one subscriber or a million subscribers so i appreciate the support um, yeah i appreciate it a lot um <clears throat> so i've been i mean a lot of people seem to be digging my my band stories these days um but i want to tell you i'm going to tell this story i'm going to i'm going to try to say this is the last time I'm ever going to tell this very short, very short story, but it was a really interesting uh, brush in with, uh, with a famous person. Um, long, long, long before the days of the Foo Fighters and Nirvana, uh, Dave Grohl, uh, the drummer for Nirvana, and obviously the guy from the Foo Fighters, everybody knows Dave Grohl now. Uh, back in the 80s, he was... Uh, a punk rock drummer for this this band called uh, Scream uh, out of Washington D.C. Uh, one of my favorite bands ever, and I used to go see them all the time in Toronto because uh, they played in Toronto often for some reason. Um, anyhow, the way it all went was uh, we were we were crashing. Me and my buddy were crashing at my buddy Joe my buddy Joe's place, and uh, he he lived in this big warehouse. And uh, kind of ran it as a booze can, you know what I mean? Like a lot of artists did that in Toronto. I don't know, it probably still goes on. But a bunch of artists will rent out a warehouse and each take a corner and uh, do their thing and live on the cheap, right? So that was the situation. And uh, <clears throat> so after the gig... Um, Joe says, we got to wait, we got to wait for the band because they're staying with us too. And I was like, holy fuck, we're going to spend the night with Scream. That's awesome. They were like my favorite band, right? So, uh, after the gig, they got all loaded out into their, into their van and stuff. And then we all piled into Joe's car and, uh, went booze cannon for the night. And, uh, just went from party to party. It was great. Great time. And then we all end up back at the warehouse, and uh, we're all hanging out, and uh, there was one piece of furniture in the whole place. It was a little love seat couch, and Dave uh, says, I'm the drummer. I work the hardest. I'm taking the couch. So he stretches out on the couch. We're all sitting on the floor, and just drinking, casual talking, you know, hanging out, and uh, Dave falls asleep. And he's got a, he just cracked a beer, just cracked a beer. And it's a crime. It was a beer crime to, to open a beer and then pass out. Right. So me being the al alcoholic opportunist, I was, I definitely swiped the, the can of beer right out of Dave Grohl's hand and I drank it. So yeah, that's my big story. I once stole a beer out of Dave Grohl's hand. 
<laughs> as we were staying at my buddy Joe's house. And uh, I never really thought too much of it until until later on when he became like a world famous superstar and I thought <laughs> I stole a beer off that guy right out of his hand when he was sleeping one night so that was that was that was kind of fun but yeah not much of a story but uh an interesting brush with a with a soon to be world famous person so and I got a free beer out of it so that was kind of cool but um Anyhow, Tuesday, I'm back on the radio. I'm back on the airwaves. Trent Radio, CFFF, 92.7. Stream us live at trentradio.ca. Uh, my, my, my radio show is called Warehouse of Strangers Radio Radio. Uh, it's based off of a Facebook group that I run called Warehouse of Strangers Radio. Uh, if, you, if you are on Facebook... Uh, look it up and join it's it's a music appreciation group we all just share music and it's a drama free zone it's a lot of fun and uh, uh yeah i base my radio show off of it um you know the music that you'll find on that page is often the music that i'll play on my radio show a lot of old punk rock a lot of old blues music stuff like that it's a lot of fun and uh but this week uh Due to a recent conversation I had, brief little conversation I had with Suit and Tie Dip and Chew Guy, uh, he told me that uh, years ago he he was kind of into the the mod the mod culture and uh, liked a lot of you know a lot of <clears throat> a lot of those old mod bands I really love like uh, Small Faces and that's that's the band he brought up um, Small Faces the Kinks. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but, uh, I'm going to be dedicating a, a chunk of the show to suit and tie dip and chew guy and digging up a bunch of old mod bands and, uh, and playing them on Tuesday. So if you can tune in on Tuesday at 3 PM, uh, trentradio.ca, um, you can hear my radio show and I'll be, uh, I'll be plugging Suit and Tie, Dip and Chew Guys channel, and uh, shouting them out, and playing a bunch of old cool mod bands like uh, like the High Numbers. That, that's the Who before they were the Who, um, the Kinks, the Purple Hearts, the Lambrettas, the the Merton Merton Parkers. Um, yeah, I love I love all that old shit. So all that old mod stuff. So. Yeah, tune in if you can. But until then, uh, I'm going to keep this video, well, it's already eight minutes, but I'll keep this kind of short. Um, thank you all once again for your views, your comments. I really appreciate it all. Cheers to Real Talk Studios for the, he left me a, left me a like on a, and a comment on my video this morning when I was playing the dulcimer and the harmonica. Uh, he left me like about a hundred smiley faces. So very thankful. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, like I say, I don't, I don't do this channel for any other reason other than my own entertainment. And I'm glad other people find it entertaining and my viewership has vastly increased over the last few months. So thanks a lot that's all i can say is thanks a lot it's been a i've had a great week here uh between my my album getting released um the holidays going by without a hitch uh yeah and lots of lots of good youtube lots of good youtube action so cheers everybody thank you so much and until the next time I uh, will see you in the meth end of town. Be well and stay free. <laughs>